<laughs> that's Joseph. He was just here saying goodbye to you. Hey, we want to welcome you to Kurt Landry Live tonight. This is going to be really a powerful time, the week of be preparation before Purim. And I really can't think of bringing a better friend for a preparatory word, like something that would be uh, counseled to somebody like Esther before her big change in her life. You are going through big changes in your life. And uh, I'm so blessed, and Christy and I are both so blessed to have Lana Vassar, uh, with us and uh, many of you know her and for those of you who don't know who she is I want you to be able to go to her web page. I'm going to put that up there uh, It's www.lanavassar.com We also have you joining us on the charisma podcast network So if you want to learn about a prophet from Australia that has the heart of God that's on the cutting edge and, and, you know, the Lord is raising up women in this hour, and Lana has been one of those. But I want to welcome you so much and for taking the time and bringing this word. You know, we planned this a long time ago, but we want to talk about hope. We want to talk about overcoming discouragement and oppression and, and the power of the prophetic to really, uh, you had a word this week, I loved it, and you talked about finding that, that the Lord has a red carpet of uh of restoration for you and so we're going to talk about that. how do you find that so let's all welcome if you would in the comments you can welcome uh lana to the broadcast welcome so much christy's over here to my right she's welcoming you our family just loves you and kevin and your family so welcome to the uh, uh kurt lander media broadcast Thank you so much. It's always such a joy to be on with you. We, you guys are just so dear to our hearts. So I'm very excited about what the Holy Spirit is going to do uh, in this time together. I, I really resonate that the Lord is wanting to release hope and encouragement, and it's just a real joy to be with you. Well, thank you. A little background. Uh, how long How long have you been saved, and when did you answer the call to be a prophet mm -hmm. of the Lord and go into ministry? Give us a little bit of a of a background here uh, of what you've been through, through so people will know where you're filtering the history through. Yeah, so uh, I came to know the Lord when I was 16 and uh, came into this beautiful relationship with Jesus. And I say often I was uh, instantly filled with a supernatural hunger to hear from God. I would have gone to the ends of the earth, climbed the highest mountain. I wanted to hear what God was saying. I didn't just want to hear through the written word of God. I wanted the dreams. I wanted visions. I wanted the, the Charlton Heston audible voice of God off the mountain. Like I was so hungry uh, to hear from the Lord. And uh, so once I was instantly um, filled with that hunger, I began to position myself for years uh, on my bedroom floor, just seeking the heart of God every day in the word. Lord, what are you saying? Lord, I want to hear your voice. And I, I say often my, my training was on my bedroom floor with the Holy Spirit as he began to lead me through scripture and, and really reveal to me who he was and his heart and his nature. And in the midst of those times of, of being with the Lord, he began to speak to me about, Lana, you're going to be a prophetic voice to the nations. I'm, this is the call on your life. You're going to carry my heart and herald my words. And little did I realize in my immaturity, I thought the Lord is releasing this incredible revelation of my destiny. So I must be going tomorrow, right? I must be about to step <laughs> into this incredible uh, call of God on my life to be a prophetic voice. And, uh, and I would say that it was probably 50 15, at least 15 years from the time the Lord spoke to me about being a, a prophetic voice to the nations to the actual release in, in a greater way of me stepping out and beginning to uh, go to the nations and begin to uh, release his voice. And in those 15 or so years, the Lord began to teach me about the place of intimacy, the place of humility, the place where character matters, integrity. And it was a process where the Lord took me through to really develop um, my identity within him and not within a title or within ministry, who I was as a daughter. And so my, my story is very much just that. I said yes to the Lord. I went through a lot of fires in my life, a lot of trials, a lot of times where I had to hold to the prophetic word that the Lord had spoken over my life, even though my natural circumstances seemed opposite. 
And then when the Lord eventually released me, I was released in in and from a place of intimacy and my identity secure in who he was. And so I, I often encourage people um, to really embrace the process, you know, between the, the commissioning of the Lord and actually his release, because that time in between is just so important. Well, you know, and uh, for, for us at 33 years with this, same experience, you know, God only um, much later, we weren't 16 but um, uh, we were in our mid thirties, but it, it was interesting because, but for the first probably 10 or 15 years, there was this hurry up and use me, Lord, we've got to get ready, you know, yes. just like, like, like this anxiousness. And so now we're at this place at, for, you know, where it's really key is I am more focused on my own personal intimacy and relationship with the Lord than, yeah. than my opportunities to speak or what platform yeah. or, uh, yeah. and, and the main reason is, is because there's, when, when you mature in the, uh, in particularly in the prophetic, we're gonna, and all the, all the fivefold, but when you mature yes. in ministry, uh, what happens is, is you start realizing that maybe some of the things you spoke in the early days and maybe some of the things you believed weren't as uh, important or as urgent, or and maybe you weren't as important and you weren't as urgent. And, and that there's a longer term, bigger uh, scope of what God's planning. And, and so now, uh, I mean, there's a real soberness in, in, in Christy and I's prophetic side of our ministry in regards to only feeling responsible to say what God's telling us to say or speak, but more importantly, in his timing. And, uh, yeah. and, and you know, I'd be honest with you, some of that hidden time in those hidden uh, places when our life was in that process, what you were talking about, where God was building character and teaching us biblical principles and foundation. To be honest with you, uh, uh, I, I wasn't enjoying all that consecration, <laughs> crucible yeah. time, but now I look back on it and with the responsibilities that we carry now, uh, I actually can long and look back and say, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm Lord, I repent or despising or not enduring or loving those times of preparation. Because yeah. that's what the whole Purim story is. It's really about her preparing. She had to say yes, but then there had to be a preparation. And, yeah. and I think, you know, our subject tonight is really with people to giving them hope is, I want to say this to you, and I, and I want Lana to, to respond to it. Right now, you may be delayed and also you may be discouraged because things have not come out the way that you prophesied them or thought they were. But I can tell you, the Lord has, the Lord has not discounted you. The Lord hasn't rejected you. In fact, this is the best time to go back in time and have that preparatory intimacy. So I wanna to talk to you about how can people take this preparatory intimacy and find that red carpet of restoration that the Lord's given you and, and the dreams that he's given you. How do people find their way back to that red carpet of joy and restoration? Yeah, and I, I really love that question because I, I feel like this is such an important conversation right now um, that the Lord is really calling us as his people to be in this place of preparation and in the place of intimacy. And I want to, I'm going to answer that question and I want to start by sharing a, a dream that I had about three, oh gosh, it was about three months ago now. Um, but in my dream, I heard the Lord speaking over the body of Christ and he said these words, meditate on what it would have been like for Mary to sit at my feet and as I was sleeping it like I was in the dream I saw Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and her eyes were full of wonder and the only way I can describe this to you was that there was a life that sparkled in her eyes that was just glorious her adoration of who Jesus was and as I was waking um, out of this dream there were so many things in the atmosphere that I could feel in the heart of God and it was an invitation for us as his people 
uh, first and foremost, to remember that place, to choose the better place, right? To choose the, the place that, that cannot be taken from us. We know that that's what scripture says in Luke chapter 10, you know, that Mary chose the better thing, the thing that could not be taken. And I felt the heart of the Lord inviting us deeper into this place of sitting at his feet. And like in the Passion Translation, I think it is, it says, Mary absorbed the revelation uh, that Jesus was releasing. And I feel like right now that there is this invitation to come to his feet and to sit at his feet and look in his eyes, the one whose eyes are like flames of fire. And in and from that place, I saw as I was waking that there was not only a refreshment, not only was there a clarity that was being released uh, by the Spirit of God, there was also such a deep uh, restoration that the Lord was bringing. And the Lord began to remind me of this word that I had had about I'm rolling out the red carpet of restoration. And I've been sensing for a number of months now the weariness that many are feeling uh, in their believing, in their contending. And I want to encourage you tonight that in the place of sitting at the feet of the Lord and listening to what God is saying, that place of yieldedness, the place of surrender that says, God, what are you saying? And looking into his eyes, that God is positioning you for restoration. He's positioning you for healing. He's positioning you for refreshing. But you and I in that place of intimacy before the Lord, in awe and wonder of who Jesus is, not being distracted by our natural circumstances, not being distracted by the media, not being distracted by anything else, but looking into his eyes. There we take again uh, the words that the Lord has said. Uh, in the last few days, I have had this these words uh, rumbling over in my heart and in my spirit. And I've heard these words go again go again, go again. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? And he said, Lana, I'm healing the hearts of my people. I'm realigning uh, where there's been disappointment, where there has been this place where I feel like I have, I've missed it or I've been knocked out or I'm feeling intimidated, whatever it may be. I'm bringing health and wholeness to my people as they draw close to me and they say, Lord, what is it that you have said? And I'm going to go again. I'm going to believe again. I'm not going to allow uh, what I have experienced, what my emotions are screaming at me to actually determine uh, my positioning. I'm actually going to take authority um, in, in you, the authority that I have to, allow, uh, to, um, to determine what influences me. And I, I felt like there's just a real empowerment of the Spirit of God that he's going to strengthen, he's going to heal and deliver, and that he wants to release hope today, that he is restoring, that the red carpet of restoration is a restoration with favor. It's the restoration that comes uh, by the hand of God alone, like in Zechariah. Career. It says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And I, I just, I have this excitement in my heart that as we come before the Lord, as we sit at the feet of Jesus, that this is a moment of restoration. This is a moment where the enemy may have screamed at you. You're disqualified, where the Lord is saying, no, I'm actually commissioning you to go again. I'm actually restoring you. I'm restoring hope to you. I'm restoring faith to you to believe again and to dream again, because I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm faithful and true and I'm good and that in the revelation of my faithfulness will come a healing and a deliverance and an empowerment to stand up and to continue to move with me by my spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, Christy and I just got back. We took uh, a little bit of time off to uh, just to recover from everything. And uh, the day that, that I had one day where I could just spend the whole day just with my journal in the Lord, and, and the Lord was dealing with me about dominion and, and all the confusion over dominion. And so I said, Lord, just you know, help me kind of in, in to embrace this because what's happening is, is people are questioning the dominion that was in them, what they prophesied, what they said, and when things don't actually happen in the timetable of, of what, they, what they think. But I wanna say this is that Dominion is about relationship. When God said in Genesis, let us make man in our image that they might have dominion and that they may multiply. Okay, that was all about the relationship. And that relationship got distracted from a tree of good and evil until they tasted evil, they knew nothing about it. So evil is, is, a, is a learned practice. 
And so when God brought restoration to covenant, he made restored covenant with the first Jew, Abraham. And when he restored that covenant with man, what he did is he was giving him godly authority, godly dominion. And so even though Abraham had a lot of problems in Sarah, but they still had a relationship of a covenant inheritance of an identity of being God's people. And so it wasn't about being perfect. It was about being in covenant with God. And then obviously the second Adam comes, Yeshua, Jesus. And when he comes and he dies on the cross, he restores all dominion. He spoke these words. He said, I have given you authority. I've given you power to tread on snakes and scorpions and, and to destroy all the works of the devil. And so, so there's this dominion. And, and what happens during times like this where we have COVID and, and we have election issues and different things that have happened happen is is that that I want to I want people to so hear this that does not change the identity that you had when you laid on the floor at 16 when I got born again in the bathtub at 36 when Christy got born again uh, in in her 30s and and, and got saved and, and prayed me into the kingdom all those things those identities as co-heirs as sons and daughters of the king kings and priests according to the order of Melchizedek because things don't happen in the way you see them or the way you say them does not only, I want you to hear this, please, people listen to me. It doesn't not just, it doesn't disqualify you, but it doesn't shame you to be able to run into your father's arms, to run down that red carpet of restoration and say, all I could say and all I could do is what you asked me to say and what you asked me to do. And now, and now what we need is we need that awakening of Joel where it says, and your old men will dream dreams and your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. And, and we need that seer anointing. We need that seer anointing and we need that prophetic anointing released because, you know, if any time you try to manage your discipline, your behavior out of principle and not out of a new seeing thing, if you see a hope, if you see a future, if, if, you, if you're not perishing for lack of vision, when you can see what God has called you to do, then the discipline and everything else falls back into place. And one of the things I, when I was getting this just the other day, we were, I was downloading this from the Lord. The Lord says, have Lana release that prophetic anointing to be able to see again, to be able to say again, to be able to feel again, to be able to awaken and, and, and dust off all that. Your prophetic gift is precious. It's a precious gift unto the Lord. The Lord says, you know, do my anointed ones no harm and do my prophets no harm. Touch not thy, my anointed ones. And so Lana, would you pray for the people? Because I have so many people that are really feeling so hurt and wounded. And I think the way to hope is to see. And if you could release that gift, it would, it would be such a blessing, please. Yeah, yeah. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the invitation, Lord, that's upon us, Lord, to, to hear your voice, Lord God, and to see what you are saying. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for, for the amazing uh, revelation and the dreams that you have been releasing to me, Lord, to, to show me the clarity that you are going to bring to your people. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I release uh, that anointing to see. I release that anointing for prophetic dreams in the night. I release that anointing to see, Lord God, what you are speaking and to see your heart, Lord God, and to see your word, Lord, to see it manifest in clarity, Lord. And I bind the spirit of confusion and that spirit of discouragement that has come against God's people, that, that witchcraft that is trying to bring a, a haze and a fog against God's people and to take the life out of them, to suck out the vision. But I release today in the name of Jesus, a fresh vision. I release fresh encounters from the Lord into your life that you would be positioned in this hour to hear what God is saying, that you would release, Lord God, a blueprint download in the night hours, Lord God, that would be so clear. Lord, it would be so specific. Lord, that it would break off a disappointment. It would break off hope deferred. Lord, it would break off discouragement. Lord, I thank you. I just see a fresh wind, the what breath of God being released over each one in the name of Jesus. I see the Lord breathing on your hearts again. Then I'm hearing the Lord say, I'm going to bring your heart back to life. That as he releases the vision 
uh, into your life to see what he is saying and to see what he is doing, that your heart is going to begin to beat again with the rhema of God, the revelation of what he is speaking. I just see hearts exploding, exploding with sight and revelation of what you're releasing, Lord. So God, I pray right now the blanket of your peace over each one, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that in your sight, Lord God, as we look into your eyes that are like flames of fire, Lord, that we see not only who you are, we see your love, Lord God, and we see wisdom and we see what you are seeing. So Lord, I release that over each one right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you so much, Lana. For those of you that are uh, on Facebook and different ones in the comments, you need to put your name in there and say amen. Let us know where you're watching from, but you need to come in agreement. I want to share something else. I was talking with a, uh, uh, my first pastor when um, uh, when I got saved, uh, Pastor Steve Gutzler. He was, he was sharing this word with me. Not really a word, but it, it reminded me of, he was talking about that this is a time where we need God to release vision. And of course, if you go into Joel 2, 28 through 32, it, you know, it talks about all of, all of that are visual gifts. And, and I felt like the Lord said this Purim this week between now and Friday, he's going to be releasing that. And the word I'm bringing that Purim is about is about vision. When Esther actually could see herself being Esther is yes. when she started being able to prepare. She had to see herself in the role. And uh, but one of the things he said, he talked about, and of course, we're older. He talked about when um, uh, when we first started watching television, I know when I did, we had a black and white television with rabbit ears and uh, <laughs> it would put aluminum foil on it and turn it different <laughs> channels. And it was very exciting because we were watching things that, you know, here, you know, here, this uh, black and white television. I mean, we watched uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, the assassination in Dallas. That was all on black and white television at that time. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the first moon rockets and everything it was in black and white and it was exciting. Everything was great. No one was complaining. The fact that we could see these things in real time, it was an amazing thing, but then it went to color. And as soon as you got into the color season, okay, it was like, man, no more black and white. We don't want that. All we want is color. And then of course we get into flat screens and high definition. And my whole point is, is that we just install the screen at house of David in the sanctuary. I don't know what the dimensions are. It's huge. But it's basically a giant computer. And what it will do, it will allow us to be able to live stream, actually, like a, it won't be Zoom, but it will be able to, and this will be coming in the future. But what's going to be coming is we'll be able to have up to a thousand people on this screen and over a hundred wow. languages translated instantly around the world, the message. And we're going to be able to virtually see them. They can virtually see us. So we can speak wow. to them. They can speak to us. So when I say, let's blow a shofar, there's literally, when the scripture says, blow a trumpet in Zion, there's literally, you can see it on the screen with a thousand people actually yeah. blowing shofars and the actual quantum physics of that sound going across that screen. And wow. So we went from, and even in my lifetime, from black and white television to to this, and and over I don't remember how many languages, but it's it's over a hundred languages translated instantly. And if and and I really think the when the when the Lord gave you the word of this is a new era, uh, I was thinking of this the other day, and when Pastor Steve mentioned it, I knew I would be speaking to you, and I thought. You, that's what that's what you're releasing in this prayer. The reason I asked you is people just traded. Some of you traded in your old black and white television in the spirit. Some of you traded in your old colored TV. And some of you now have some high definition, but not only high definition, but literally an interactive virtual experience with the Holy Spirit where you can actually see into the courts of heaven and the courts of heaven can see into you. And, and you are actually in that realm of being able in the spirit where things are into almost a 3D dimensional time. And once you start to see that, it really doesn't matter. You know, it is so far superior to what they're saying on the news networks. You won't let that mass media manipulation oppress you any longer because yeah. you're seeing literally at a higher level. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to share that with you. What do you think of that? 
Yeah, that resonates so deeply within me. I have had uh, numerous dreams and numerous encounters with the Lord in the last 12 months where the Lord has been speaking to me about the invitation upon us as his people to draw close to him, to be in the word and to be asking for an increase of sight and to ask for his wisdom. And I've had uh, quite a number of dreams where the Lord has showed me that he is not only... Um, bringing us into a higher place of vision and clarity, but there is also um specific instruction that the Lord is wanting to bring. And he and he would actually show me like things in dreams, like minute details. And I really felt like when you were sharing um, to encourage everybody watching, continue to ask the Lord for heavenly sight and for heavenly wisdom. Be asking the Lord continually because there is available to us in this new era, that place of encounter with the Lord where we see in a way that we've never seen before. This is the era where we're going in a in a way we've never been before with the Lord. We're going to see unprecedented demonstrations of his glory, his power, his majesty, and a, a raising up of the remnant who live with their eyes locked in with his. I know I keep repeating uh, his eyes, but that he's just been so speaking to me about his eyes and that as you look into his eyes, that you are going to see in a way that you have never seen before. As you position your heart in that place of intentional, ferocious focus on Jesus and what he is saying, that there is a, um, I'm, I'm hearing the words, there's a rest in the rhema that he's releasing and there's a reset in the rhema that he's releasing. That as as you see that not only is God downloading a divine strategy and revelation for your own life and for your family and for your marriage and your children, but also uh, he's releasing revelation for what he is, what he has planned for you and for you to get up and to go again. And so when you were sharing, Rabbi Kurt, I just, that just resonates so deeply in my spirit because there's such an attack, I believe, of the enemy. I've had a number of dreams about the enemy coming uh, and using gas masks to try and put people to sleep and to try and steal their vision and to cause them to be hopeless. But whenever I have a dream like that, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take that to prayer. But Lord, what are you saying? And every time the Lord has said, the enemy's coming against uh, the revelation and the vision of my people because I'm raising up a remnant who are carrying my heavenly vision, my strategy and my wisdom and clarity of what the Spirit of God is saying, what is beating on my heart in greater boldness and greater courage and greater empowerment uh, to see the demonstration of what happens when I speak. And so I just, I really feel like that, that invitation is upon us right now to really engage with uh, asking the Lord that we may see what he says. Absolutely. I want to encourage people too, and I want to just uh, share this with Lana. Um, uh, I want to, hang on one second. I want to get something here. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. I, I think this is I think this is so important. Um, for many of you, it's new the whole uh, the Hebraic calendar, but God has historically always moved with the Hebraic calendar, not exclusively, but there is seasonal understanding. Uh, you you hear different ministries talk about the Issachar anointing and uh, the know the times and the seasons. But it also goes on to say, and what God ought to do with Israel. And so Israel, the state of Israel right now, modern Israel, is in a very interesting time. And the Lord is speaking volumes, and uh, I'll be bringing more about that. But we put together this book called The Spring Feast. This is a biblical study guide uh, between Passover and Pentecost. But the reason I want people to, to get this now, and you can get this on the on the Charisma podcast, you can go to clmmin.com forward slash spring feast, forward slash spring feast, or go to kurtlandry.com and go to the products tab. Now, the reason that this is so important is because the preparation of Esther right now, this preparation time I think is critical. I think literally from, from now until Friday, that, that there's gonna be strategies and spiritual downloads where the Lord's gonna show you how to hang the Haman that is planning on putting that gas mask on you and take and put you to sleep and try to take you out. I, 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 I believe it. 
Thursday night, this Thursday coming up, seven o'clock central, I'm going to be bringing a prophetic word about Passover and about Purim. I mean, and it's uh, and the title of it is Purim, Providence of Prepared Pioneers. And there is a preparation for the prepared remnant within the remnant. That time is right now. And then we're going to have the time where we work our way into Passover. And then of course, the 50 days into Pentecost. I believe that this season of time that we're talking about roughly about, let's, I don't know, I don't know the math, but about 65, 70 days, this next period of time, I believe is gonna be the most critical time for focused on purpose intimacy with the Lord. That's why when Lana brought the word to us about this uh, being catapulted into the red carpet, so to say, of restoration. I think that's really important, but I wanna put some tools in your hands. So I want you to be able to get the Spring Feast Biblical Study Guide of Passover and Shavuot, this Pentecost, because the more you understand why Gentiles, non-Jewish people, Christians, why should we celebrate the, uh, the Feast of the Lord? These are God's Sunday school lessons from heaven to earth. These, these are teaching tools. You don't legalistically have to teach them, at all, uh, know them, but it's so wise to understand. Think about it. There's two women, there's two women in the Bible who actually have books written after them. Number one is Ruth, a Moabitess who said, your people shall be my people. Where you go, I'll go. Where you die, I'll die. I mean, she was totally sold out. Why? Because she had a vision. She could see that Naomi's God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was going to be her kingsman redeemer, but was the real God of the universe. She has a whole book. And from her, the lineage, the lineage of Messiah, Yeshua. And now we're in this season where we have Esther. It's the same thing. Now we have a Jewish woman who her uh, her uncle, who adopted her, Mordecai, said, said, Deliverance will come from another place if you don't say yes. But here's the key. Think about this, Esther. Could you be called for such a time as this? And that's the question today. The steps of a good and righteous man and woman are order of God. You are called for today. You're not out of sync. You're not rejected. You don't need anything but a time to reset your love on the Father and the Father to reset his love on you. And you need to see it. You need to know it. You need to feel it. You need to believe it. You need to know other people believe. You are not shamed. I want, I love the prophets. I think the prophets in this season have done an extraordinary job. I have never been prouder to be called a prophet of God ever in my life in 33 years. Uh, of being a prophet. I think it's wonderful. And I cancel all those negative words off, off false prophets and this. Listen, you, all you are responsible to do is to say what God has asked you to say. And here's something I learned from Dr. T.L. Osborne years ago, and I'm going to give it to you. I asked T.L., I said, what do you do, T.L., in your giant healing ministry when people don't get healed and when people do get healed? And he said this, he said, when they don't get healed, I give God all the glory. He said, when they do get healed, I give God all the glory. He said, because my job is just to do the small thing and God does the big thing. But the key is this, he gets all the glory. So as we go out and close, I'm going to ask Lana just to speak a healing word over you, a prophetic word, so that you will reset, renew, and restore your hope. And most of all, know that in this Purim season and in this fall feast season, I believe the fall feasts of 2021 are going to be the most restoration, empowering, envisioning time. And we want the joy of the Lord to be your strength. So Lana, would you release that onto the people, please? Yeah. Yeah. As you were sharing, um, it reminded me of a word that the Lord gave me a couple of days. Oh, it's actually, I haven't, I haven't got it in front of me, but you can find it on my website. Um, I think maybe a week ago. And I heard the Lord say these words, I'm bringing in a turmoil to rest. And why am I saying this? Because I felt, I heard it again uh, while you were sharing, Rabbi, I heard those words, I'm bringing in a turmoil to rest. And I want to prophesy this over each one of you, that as you sit at the feet of Jesus, as you're in that place of 
of just yielded surrender. You say, Lord, whatever it, whatever, I'm, I'm signing yes on the bot on the dotted line at the bottom before I even know what the the steps are. I'm yielding. I'm I'm surrendering myself yes, again. Lord. That the Lord is going to cause by His love and by the empowerment of of His Spirit. I saw you burning uh, with the fire of God's presence and the fire of His love as you sit at His feet. That you will uh, feel again. I see many of you have felt like God. Have I lost my first love? Like I feel numb. That's the word I kept saying. I feel numb before you. But I prophesy over you that as you sit at His feet and you look in the eyes of Jesus, that there is a tenderizing of your heart that is going to break through. I see the fire of God coming upon the dry places of your heart and igniting life again. And I prophesy the Lord is loving you back to life. He is loving you back to life. Those places of, of disappointment, the places of discouragement, the things that have hindered your heart in this hour, that as you see, like Rabbi and I were talking about, as you see what God is saying, that he is bringing you back to life, but also the inner turmoil that has been within. I mm, prophesy so that you are stepping into a place mm. of encounter where you will experience mm. again the peace that surpasses all understanding, that you will come deeper into the place where you look in his eyes and you are filled with peace again, that inner wrestle that many of you have been living with, that place of foreboding, that place of fear, that the Lord is putting those things to rest as you come before him and you intentionally sit at his feet, that as you align and you say, Lord, I repent for aligning with fear, I repent for aligning with unbelief, whatever it may be, that I see the, the flood of the Holy Spirit pouring over your life and the breath of God breathing upon you to not only bring your heart back to life, but to bring you into a place of, I see new assignment. And I prophesy the Lord is preparing you to tend new gardens in this hour, to tend new pieces of land and that the opposition that has come against you, that, mm. that, that heaviness that has come against you to, to scream at you to say, just give up, sit down, be quiet. That spirit of intimidation is intimidated because of the new assignment that God has for you. So I That's prophesy right. and release over you that even in the next seven days that you will have an encounter with God where you will see the commission of the Lord and the assignment of God for the new uh, era that is upon us right now. And it will make sense to you why the push it the uh, the heaviness and the opposition has been so strong in your life because of the new land, the new assignment that God has for you. And as you step into that new assignment, I prophesy fruitfulness and an ease and a grace and a favor that you have not known before. You are not disqualified. The enemy has tried to disqualify you, but the eyes of the Lord are upon you to bring you into greater health, greater wholeness, greater maturity and greater empowerment in Jesus' name. So Father, Father, I just release that right now. And Lord, I thank you for the encounter with you that is upon each one of your beautiful people in this hour as they lean in. God, as you speak again, as they hear again, as they believe again, and they say, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stand on what the Lord is saying, and I'm going to wage war with that which you are speaking. Lord, that they would live by Matthew 4, for every word that flows out of the mouth of God. And Lord, I pray for deeper encounter with you where they will be surprised by your voice and one word out of your mouth, Lord, will bring that inner turmoil to rest. I release that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you receive that, please put in the comments. Go ahead and say yes in Yeshua's name. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to get a hold of Lana Vassar, www.lana, L-A-N-A, Vassar, V-A-W-S-E-R.com. That's V-A-W-S-E-R.com for those of you on the podcast on the Charisma Network. And we're so excited. Uh, so you have uh, ministry schools, prophetic ministry schools. You have books and you have teaching materials. Give us a summary of when they go to your webpage, what, what can they find there to help them with their call and their, and their walking with the Lord? 
Yeah, so if you jump onto our website, we do have, uh, we've got courses, we've got uh, prophetic words, we have some uh, ministry tools on there that you will find. Uh, my latest book, I Hear the Lord Say New Era, uh, is on my website. It's uh, It was an assignment that the Lord gave me to just scribe some of the things that he, he was releasing to position us to be propelled and prepared for this new era. So uh, you can jump onto the website. Everything is available there, all our online schools and I pray that it will be a blessing to you uh, as you engage with some of the things that the Lord has uh, had us release. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, you're married to your husband, Kevin, who is a friend of mine. And yes. how many children do you have? I have three beautiful children. Uh, I have Elijah, who's 10. I have uh, 11 now. Oh, my goodness. I have Judah, who's six, and Benjamin, who is two. So, yes, they're, they're my delights. <laughs> Very good Jewish names, I must say. Yes. <laughs> Handpicked uh, by the Lord. <laughs> so all of us at Kurt Landry Ministry House of David, all of us in my olive tree that are watching, if you would all just extend your hands right now. Just extend your hands. Father, we lift up Kevin and Lana and the boys and, and their children. And Lord, we thank you in Yeshua's name. Lord, we just pray blessings upon them out of Zion. Lord, we bless them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Lord, we thank you that you're going to release abundant provision, vision, and protection for all they do. Lord, we ask that you're going to raise them up in this new land, in this new era, in this new season. Lord, take their voices and Lord, and multiply it. Just multiply it. I see a dandelion and, and I see the Lord breathing on it and just the little spores flying all over the globe. And Lord, just let your wind blow the message all over the globe, planting seeds of multiplication. The Lord says, be fruitful and multiply. The Lord says, walk without fear. And the Lord says, he's bringing many to you uh, from the highways and the hedges that the Lord's house might be filled. And the Lord says, I'm giving you an anointing to reach those who are the unreached, those who have been hurt by the church, those that have been hurt by religious institutions and put in boxes. And uh, I, I see, uh, actually I see Kevin uh, with, a, with a box cutter in his hand going in and opening boxes and taking people out and say, it's time to get free from that box. Come on out, come on out, come on out, come on out. There's new things for you. There's new birthings for you, new, new purposes. And Lord, we just prophesy a new book even this year, even in the midst of the busyness. Let it, let it just flow out like a river. And Lord, we just thank you for divine relationships and networking of likeness. I speak likeness that you would find ministries and ministers and business people of likeness. And that the Lord says likeness is more important than talent and ability, but likeness of heart. Let that likeness of heart be released into the Vassar family and their ministry in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Well, Lana, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to close with? Yes, just one thing uh, I was hearing just uh, as we were finishing. I heard these words um, that the Lord is going to bring provision for the vision. And uh, and it reminded me a couple of weeks ago, uh, I won't go into it all, but I, I rode a camel for the first time, which was incredible. And as I was on the camel, the Lord reminded me of a word that I had released a, f a number of years ago now about the camels are coming uh, to bring the provision. And as uh, we were about to close up, I saw saw people in a place of encounter and the Lord was beginning to release that vision and uh, and that the, the new assignments and the new things that he had. But I heard people going, Lord, I don't have the provision to do this. Like this is so big. It's bigger than I expected. Mm -hmm. If that's you, I want to encourage you that the Lord is bringing supernatural provision for the vision, yes. that you have the provision in order to extend in the ways God is having you extend to go again and to build with God. Don't worry about where the provision is going to come. The Lord is going to take care of the provision. He's just asking you to step out in faith and obedience to the vision that he is, he is releasing to you. So I prophesy that supernatural provision over your life today in the name of Jesus. I Hallelujah. Receive and when uh, when Lana was speaking about land, she just talked about new land. Uh, I want to take that and unpack it a little bit because 
some of you are, are going to be acquiring land, new land provision, and you don't have the vision. I mean, you don't have the provision, but I pray that the Lord in agree, I, I connect to that land purchase and that land increase with that provision now in Yeshua's name. And the Lord says, it's time for you to start the preparatory steps. When you do the small thing, he says, I will do the, the, the big thing. Land right now is an important thing. Key portals, land, dominion, very, yes. very important. Yes, amen. Hallelujah, so Hallelujah. good. Hallelujah, so good. Praise the Lord. Do you have anything else, babe? You're welcome. <laughs> Christy said it was awesome. <laughs> Thank what? you. Yes, I love it. She said yes. that you were more awesome than me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Oh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Such a love joy. Love you guys too. Shalom, shalom. Blessings. Blessings to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.